CARICOM voorzitter Chandrika Prasad Santoki heeft tijdens een persconferentie bij de achtste editie van de CARICOM Cuba Summit benadrukt dat de relatie tussen de regionale organisatie en Cuba constant is gebleven ondanks de steeds veranderde politieke, sociale, economische en ecologische contexten. Volgens president Santoki kan de 50-jarige relatie tussen de CARICOM en Cuba omschreven worden als zeer succesvol. Het is diepli symbolisch dat we should be hosting this meeting here in Barbados, forever etched in our region's history as an original signatory of the monumental agreement that has allowed us to come together for this eight high-level summit. Let me at the outset extend appreciation to the government and people of Barbados for arrangement put in place for hosting the eighth summit of the heads of state and government of the Caribbean community and Cuba. The warm welcomes and generous hospitality extended to CARICOM delegations and the delegation of Cuba on arrival and the sustained warmth and affection extended throughout our stay have framed the context for a successful meeting. Therefore, I take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Amor Motley, for hosting us here in Barbados. Colleagues, friends, I trust we will have frank and robust discussions on the issues before us and deliver tangible results for the benefit of our respective countries and people. The agenda affords us the opportunity to further the badly needed dialogue among others on agriculture, food security, disaster prevention, and management and climate change. Since we last met virtually on the occasion of the 7th CARICOM Cuba Summit, several significant developments have taken place in our hemisphere and globally. Negative externalities and socioeconomic challenges have arisen that exacerbate regional vulnerabilities and have resulted in significant setbacks to the region's developmental agenda. The protracted a multifaceted crisis resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic have levied disruption and hardship in nearly every aspect of our lives, despite our return to a semblance of normalcy. It continues to weigh heavily on the global economy. Our high-level political dialogue is also taking place during a period of geopolitical uncertainty due to the deeply divisive and challenging issues. These challenges compel us to continue strengthening our collective actions. And as we do, so we are comforted in knowing that since the establishment of our intra-regional relations, the CARICOM-Cuba relationship has remained robust in spite of various hegemonic forces and the ever-changing hemispheric and international geopolitical environment. Mr. President, a small stage with limited resources, it is imperative that we pool our efforts and stand behind common rights and principles to advance our objectives. These fundamental rights and principles outlined in the United Nations Charter include imperative tenets such as non-interference, non-intervention, prohibition of the threat and use of force, the rule of law, and the right to self-determination. When respected, they have provided a protective cover for the security, territorial integrity, and sovereignty of small states against significant global powers and regional hegemons. The unjust and unilateral imposition of the financial, commercial, and economic embargo on Cuba is a, pri is a prime example of the violation of these principles. 
the Caribbean community condemns unreservedly the continuation of the economic, trade, and financial embargo imposed on Cuba by the United States and is steadfast and unrelenting in our cause for its immediate cessation. I would like, I would like to recall the statement of CARICOM during the Summit of the Americas earlier this year in the exclusion of countries to the summit. Mr. President, you mentioned it, but the CARICOM made it clear that it is incomprehensible that countries of the Americas, including Cuba, which have provided strong leadership and contributed to the hemisphere on critical issues of our time, were isolated from this summit. We in CARICOM remain committed and constant in our advocacy for Cuba to be fully integrated into all aspects of hemispheric and international relations and trade. My country, Suriname, also offers its unwavering support to Cuba in relation to the call to end the unfair and unjust economic, financial, and commercial blockade against Cuba.